what is going on everybody it's Alex coming back here with another video and today we are coming back with round three of three of this mock draft the nfl draft is tomorrow guys and uh, we're still developing we're still having things that we got to change on our mock so tomorrow we're having our predicted first round mock which i pray to god i mean i'm, I'm still not going to go mac jones i seriously don't think it but we might be seeing another guy at number three which obviously there's only one other guy besides the two that we've already talked about so Keep your eyes out for that. That should be fun. But let's kick it off. Number 65, the Jags are on the board. And um, this is an easy decision for me. Pat Fryermuth fell, and he normally does. And that's just because, I mean, I have a second-round grade on him. I don't hate him at all. It's just how many teams really need a big, bulky tight end. If you're not, I mean, even the Bengals, I don't really feel like you want another Tyler Eifert type, which I believe I I put uh, Pat Fryermuth to Vance McDonald. So that's a... Uh, that's another uh, type of comp for him. But, you know, Pat Farmuth, definitely a really, really good talent. And people, I mean, even PFF's hating on Brevin Jordan. He's super talented. Just because you see 4-7, I mean, you got to turn on the tape. You got to watch how he plays. I hope that that 4-7 isn't indicative of him not uh, taking care of himself in the offseason. But if he does fall, which will probably happen in the predictive mock draft, then, um, of course, some updates are not installed. You got to love the fucking Apple computers. Um if he does fall, that probably will be able to benefit another team. And hopefully it is not because of the fact that he is a little bit too lazy and doesn't take care of himself in the off season. We're just going to, we're just going to tell this thing to fuck off. You, you feel me? The hair also needs to fuck off because we haven't had too many hair issues recently, but now we're dealing with it. So at number 66, the jets are on the board. And it's a little bit unfortunate because uh, Wyatt Davis is here. That would be a pretty nice little snag right there, right? But we are in desperate need of slot corner. Uh, we could also go after a running back at the spot. Don't think it's good enough value here. Uh, we could trade back again because Wyatt Davis is on the board. But there are some really good corners on the board. Uh, Trill Williams, I'm literally doing a report on him literally in this window right here. Uh, he is a... Uh, it, it's very interesting. He's a slot corner. Did not know that. And I thought that they're saying he could be a wide corner. So that's definitely interesting because I think, honestly, he's a tr he's a free safety. So uh, it's, it's very intriguing to me. But that's beside the point. Uh, this is a good spot for us to trade down, to be 100% fair. We could go Amari Rogers here, though, as like a really good slot option. But I think we should go back, get some more picks. For teams that are looking to trade up for a guy like Wyatt Davis, somebody who they can develop, who can grow on their roster. And I'm checking a certain team's picks to see what they have done. And uh, I think this is a pretty logical, quick little move up because they have a, another pick pretty damn soon. That's the Panthers. The Panthers don't really have much at guard right now. I mean, even uh, we could also look at the Bengals trying to move up here. The question is, who would we go after with the Jets? Because we could definitely look at Amari Rogers is a good option, but then we're going to have to strike pretty soon. Also, there's Javon Holland on the board. Uh, so there's there's a plethora of dudes. Richie Grant as well. A team like the Falcons could be wanting to move up to this spot to select him. But it's, it's a definitely a, a tough spot to gauge which, which teams that you want to move up. We could even take a center right here because I don't really think that um, – I'm forgetting the guy's name. Uh, you guys brought him in. I mean, Dan Feeney was just brought in at center. We could even just pull the trigger on Josh Myers here. But I think, honestly, the best possible move would potentially be with the Bengals to move up for a guard like with Wyatt Davis. It, it's a tough one. Um, the question is, do you want to stay – and both of you, you want to stay in conference or out of conference? I think that's a smart move. The Bengals are going to move up to solidify their line. I, I think that's a, that's a very smart move. They just didn't pick up the – like as of this morning, uh, the fifth-year option. Um, Actually, oh shit, they're both in the AFC. I'm so stupid. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. We're not going to trade in, in. Yeah, that was just, that was a total slip up by me. For some reason, I thought the Jets were in the AFC. We actually are going to be trading with the Panthers because the Panthers, they're going to be more aggressive this offseason for some offensive weapons, and they're going to be moving up with the Jets. I like it. Um, they got it from Denver. That was the third round pick, and they swapped fourths. So we're just moving up here. And we're going to be offering maybe a six-round pick and com uh, compensation. You know, it's just – it's super easy. And it's a, it's a quick move. So you rock that. Uh, six-round pick is perfectly fine. You get – scoop up Wyatt Davis. We need to start piecing this line together. And Wyatt Davis is excellent, excellent value. Again, Greg Little was supposed to be a first-round pick, but he was developmental. 
So he fell a little bit. Same thing with Wyatt Davis. I think it's going to be a very similar story where he's going to fall to the start of the third. And the team that took Greg Little is going to be taking Wyatt Davis here. At 67, the, um, uh, the I was about to say the Buccaneers, the Bills. Uh, again, I just can't really see any really good options here. You know, Ellerson Smith could be a really intriguing prospect for us. Um, I don't know if we still have Cole Beasley. I know we're in the tight end hunt, but I just did a report on Tommy Tremble, and he is an excellent fullback. I think he's Kyle Juszczyk. That's not what I'm looking for. But you know who I could put on the squad? Milton Williams at defensive end. I think that, you know, you took – um, you took the interior defensive lineman out of Houston, who I'm randomly blanking on, who, I mean, he was one of my favorite players of all time. I don't even understand it. Like coming into the draft, I loved him. Oh my God. I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Regardless, you know who he is. He hasn't been doing too well this, uh, in these past years. And he was also undersized as well. I think he was around that 290 range. So Ed Oliver, there you go. Uh, Milton Williams could play that role, but since you already have Starlin Tule there, you can put him at defensive end. He has so much potential, and I love it. He's definitely going to be um, a round two or early round three pick just because he just his athletic profile is unbelievable. I love it. I love his athletic profile. At this spot, um, we definitely need to get safety here. You know, I don't really know why it's not as big of a need, but if Richie Grant's on the board, I don't care who you have there. Uh, we could just check out, like, free agency, uh, the free agency tracker, just to make sure that the Falcons didn't go out and do anything crazy, which, if I'm not mistaken, they didn't. So, um, of course, I messed that up. I don't – yeah, they got Deron Harmon and Eric Harris. That's that, To me, that, that means absolutely nothing. We're getting Richie Grant here, unbelievably uh, talented safety out of UCF. I was thinking about potentially trading up with a team uh, like the Raiders, but I think Andre Sisco could be also a single high who could be a um, maybe a later third round pick if we have one for the Raiders. So I like that pick a lot. 69, we got the Bengals on the board and y'all just missed out on, um, on interior offensive lineman right there. Trey Smith could be worth the pick. He definitely could because he can't deal with being at high altitudes because of um, his pulmonary. Uh, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting the actual term for it, but um, it makes his blood, his blood, he has blood clots. That's the bottom line. He has blood clots. Um, of course, I just turn off the entire screen, but uh, he has blood clots and that, that's, he's going to be on uh, blood thinners for the rest of his life. That's going to be really, it's, it's a sad story to be honest with you, but um, you know, he definitely has talent. He's definitely much better at blocking in the past game. So that's going to be a big plus for me. That actually might be the move. Just get Trey Smith here. Uh, Edge is definitely someone I could somewhere some way I can look. I'm totally bugging today, guys. Um, to me, I'm gonna go Trey Smith here. You gotta be able to secure the offensive line. Now you have Penny Sewell or Riley Reef at guard, Trey Smith, and then Jonah Williams and Penny Sewell slash Riley Reef. Center's still an issue, but I think that you still have Billy Price for a year. Use him there uh, and then let Joe Burrow be the commander of the offensive line to limit that um, negative. I don't think Josh Myers over the upside of Trey Smith is worth that pick. So number 70, uh, we got the Eagles. And this could be definitely Josh Myers here. Like for the for a team like the Jets, I'd probably want to look at that. They could definitely um, swoop in and steal him right there. But safety-wise, there's still Javon Holland on the board. And, you know, you don't have really much in that backfield anymore. I don't – like it, uh, Anthony Harris is there for a year. There's a huge drop off, in my opinion, after this in terms of safety talent. I mean, Demar Hamlin to me is so good, though. I just I think Javon Holland's a little bit too good to pass on. I don't know. You guys got to tell me about that because he definitely can play corner, so that's extra corner depth for you guys. Uh, he can play that safety role very well. Has good ball skills, and to me, he's a second round pick. Looking at the linebackers, Pete Werner would be a fun guy, but you could go after Chas Harat if you want, like an Anthony Harris replacement. But I'm going Javon Holland, best player available. Why not? You know, you have now you can have Javon Holland there and then you can have Kayvon Wallace for the future. That is going to be very crucial. And again, that that allows uh, Javon Holland to maybe play some slot corner for you guys. And then you can fill that role while Anthony Harris is having a good impact on the squad as you find another slot corner. I think that's honestly, it's just best player available. Some people think he might be the fifth best corner in the class as a corner, pure corner. That that to me kind of screams that, well, I mean, the Eagles can now have two corners. That's going to be a big plus, especially with how many injuries always happen there in Philadelphia. 71, the Jets. Now, um, this pick is interesting because, again, I think we might just pull the trigger on Josh Myers 
because there are teams that probably want a center. Um, I'm looking at teams like Green Bay potentially wanting to move up for a center. But I, I don't know. I don't know if I could pull a trigger on Josh Myers at this point because we do have a desperate need at corner. It, like If Yachty Malfamu would be a great option, and he could be a first-round pick potentially. So with that being said, I think we take him. I think we take him. He's going to be a pretty good fit in this cover uh, in this cover three scheme. You you take him. Honestly, that that's just the bottom line. I don't. I, I know that there was a center there, but you take him. At number seventy two, we got the um, the Lions, and this is this is a gut feeling. It's a real gut feeling. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Sean Wade at this spot. You know, he was supposed to be a top ten pick this year before he switched to boundary corner. And he was easily heads and shoulders, even better than Elijah Molden, above. Uh, he was just head and shoulders above everybody else in that slot corner realm. If he can play that slot corner role, he's going to have a big impact in this league. Let's check out what they did in the second round. They got Walker Little. So then now they had a developmental tackle that can be moved to right tackle. And they have Sean Wade, who's going to be a pretty solid fit right there with Jeff Okuda. I think that's going to be a big boost to this secondary. People aren't realizing that teams are going to look at Sean Wade and be like, wait, how can we get him back to where he was? Because he was easily a top 15 player and he randomly fell to the fourth round. So I think that that is going to drive a lot of like unwarranted, maybe demand for Sean Wade. That's going to be putting him here around the third round. I think this is a perfect fit. I mean, you go after Ohio State corners all the time. Sean Wade's going to go here or to the Raiders. I, I think that there's no doubt in my mind about that. 73, we got the Panthers. And the Panthers could definitely be looking at corner here. Paulson Adebo is a great option. And we're seeing a run on corners, by the way. Look at this. This round is pretty much all defense. I love it. Um, you know, you got Ronnie Perkins here. You don't need that. Uh, Mari Rogers, we already got that slot weapon, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, I believe we got Katarius Tony, which is great. That was a great option. Tommy Tremble could be a good option, though. I think that he is a pure fullback, but you can use him in a tight end situation if you want to. I think that he'd be good in 21 sets, but I mean, to be honest, you kind of are desperate at this point to put it, uh, to put it bluntly tackle wise. I could see um, some guys going here. Stone Forsyth could be a good starting left tackle. And to be honest, this is probably the value where I could see him being taken. Let's get Stone Forsyth here. I think that that is going to, you guys probably don't know who Stone Forsyth is. He is possibly one of the most, if not the most day one ready tackle in this class. He just doesn't have that much upside. I have him ranked, I, I have him called Ty in, uh, Inseki, who is notorious for being an amazing swing tackle. Never good enough to start for a long period of time, but always great to fill in and to start for maybe a season or two if needed. Stone Forsyth is perfect for that. He's going to step in day one provide some very solid support uh, for Sam Darnold. And that's going to be a huge plus. I, my probably my biggest regret of this off season is probably is doing like a, not doing a, what if Mac Jones was the number three overall pick uh, mock draft, which I played around that scenario. It was definitely interesting, but at number 74, Washington is sitting here and uh, we, they need a slot corner too. To be honest, this could be where Trill Williams goes. We already got the single high safety. Uh, we already got the linebacker, which I know some people don't want uh they don't really think that JOK could be that linebacker, but he's going to be a will linebacker. That's perfectly fine for his size. I'm perfect. I would be perfectly fine sticking him there rather than just pure slot corner. Um, he's just there in case. I would look at wide receiver as a for a boundary here, and you got Nico Collins, who'd be a really fun option. Uh, you could go Dwayne Eskridge if you want to kick Curtis Samuel outside, but again, we sh he's shown all of us that he is um, a slot wide receiver at his best. To me, I think this is where Trill Williams goes. He has some great... Oh, man, no, actually, I can't. I can't do that. Well, in the division, you think about the tight ends. They're not great. You know, Dallas doesn't have any great tight ends. Well, apparently, you're trading up for Kyle Pitts. I mean, that'd be insane. But um, the Eagles, they have Dallas Goddard, which could be an issue, but you match up JOK on that. Then uh, you can move him also to safety. It's definitely an interesting spot because I'm really working on that uh, right now. But I think that he is he can play a safety slash slot corner route in the NFL. And he's excellent, excellent when he runs his own. So to me, oh, man, I mm, mm, this is a tough one. This is a real tough one because I know you need slot corner pretty desperately. So let's get Trey Williams here in the hopes that he can continue to develop uh, his press against tight ends. But his press against wide receivers is pretty damn excellent. So uh, he has a lot of upside there. 
I think that he will be going pretty high due to the fact that he can command his zone and also run man pretty damn well. So long as he's not in just pure man on man coverage against some very speedy wide receivers, which I mean, you got Jalen Rager there, but I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. 75, we got the Cowboys. And uh, to me, this is a good spot potentially to trade back. Again, I don't think Tommy Tremble's a tight end. Uh, but this could just be worth taking a shot on. Again, you want to develop that run game. I don't like Blake Jarwin. I'm going to be honest, I don't like him. Interior defensive line-wise, you still got Davion Nix in here. I'm not too comfortable taking him right now. Uh, I think we got to just pull the trigger on Tommy Tremble. I put in my report last night. I called him Cal Juszczyk. That's just a little bit too good of value. I was thinking about taking him for Washington, but it's just, I couldn't, I can't pull that trigger, man. You know, Washington needs an actual playmaker to be a tight end. It's just Tommy Tremble had, um, he had like 32 or something like 35 receptions on 52 passes or 52 targets over two years. It's not like over that was one year. That was over two years. He has like no targets. So can definitely end up boosting Zeke's stock. And that's something that this team desperately needs is Zeke to actually compete at a high level. So I like that pick. At the Giants spot, this is a good spot to trade out, man. You guys have a pretty loaded roster, and there's still some really good guys on the board. I'm looking at Josh Myers here, and this is a good spot to trade back with a team that's center hungry. Uh, you can talk about um, the Raiders right now. They don't really have that. They got Nick Martin, but like he got cut by the damn Texans. I mean, if you get cut by the Texans, it's not a great sign. You talk about the Eagles. Eagles could be trying to move up right now to select a center like Josh Myers. But I think this is weird because I, I do this every time. The Steelers are going to be moving up. Uh, they're going to be moving up with um, – who's actually on the board right now? I'm bugging. Uh, the Giants. Uh, the Giants are notoriously stingy in this. So we're going to see if this even works. Okay, good. So at least they have their head on straight. Um, so we're going to send it a, a six, not a sixth. We're going to send it a next year fifth from Vegas. And then maybe we'll toss in one of our sevens this year because I don't think the Steelers have too many – desperate holes the Steelers need a center desperately and now we got Najee we got um we got Tevin Jenkins now we gotta get Josh Myers that's a desperate need for us you need to fill in that center role get Josh Myers the Steelers should be desperate at this point because of the fact that they're trying to win now and this is the only way they're going to be able to do it so rock Josh Myers there 77 we got the Chargers and the Chargers would have went safety honestly if um if I saw Javon Holland here I would take him in a heartbeat He's not here. Divine Diablo would be an interesting target because I like Divine Diablo. I've always liked him, so that's a big plus. But Ronnie Perkins is a little bit too good to pass up on. Honestly, I might just pull I, I might pull the trigger. We do need a potential next guard, which um, I'm not willing to pull the trigger. Ben Cleveland would be a pretty good option there. But I'm going to be pulling Ronnie Perkins in. It's just a little bit too good to pass up on. So uh, he definitely, he's an interesting guy, to put it uh, lightly. He has moments of good... Uh, of solid play, but at the same time, sometimes he's a little bit mitigated. So it's worth developing in the third round. At number 78, we got the Vikings. And the Vikings, this is interesting because we could definitely rock a corner here with Paulson Adebo, who I like Paulson Adebo. If I were the Steelers and he was still there, I would take him in a heartbeat. But um, I don't know if this is the right move. Interior offensive line would be a pretty solid move here with like a Ben Cleveland. Uh, offensive tackle, you could look at James Hudson. You know, uh, Robert Hainsey is a great option. Another option for the Steelers later on if they do miss out on a guy like Josh Myers. This is this is a good spot. Honestly, I'm going to be taking Paulson Adebo. He can learn how to uh, get back up to NFL speed. He opted out this year from, um, from Patrick Peterson. And the ceiling's just too high on Paulson Adebo. Very talented cornerback there. You know, I think that he'll have a very good impact. Keith Taylor's still on the board too, but he's going to be falling a little bit. At number 79, we could definitely look at a slot corner here, or we can look at a single high safety. Or Darius Washington and Andre Sisco, both really talented options right there. Um, slot corner-wise, we're not really looking at too much here. Uh, Keith Taylor's purely a boundary. Kerry Vincent, I know that this team likes to take reaches on random players. Marco Wilson's another interesting option. We could be seeing him in day two. It's a tough one. We could look at uh, Ben Cleveland here as a potential future at guard, but it's just... Ah, uh, this is this is a bad spot. This is a bad spot to be. I know we need a slant, a uh, Sam Blitzing linebacker who's around 240 pounds. So uh, Chesara is definitely not built to be a Sam. He's definitely built to blitz, but not to be a Sam. So I'm gonna go Pete Werner here. I think he actually fits the linebacking core pretty well, and I think you can use him um, in blitz packages if you really want to. 
maybe not the best upside there, but he is an excellent linebacker, in my opinion, and somebody who's going to be very consistent for you. Maybe he won't be able to have that great of an impact, but he's definitely going to have a good enough impact. And at this spot, I think we got to pull the safety card on him. Uh, Ardarius Washington could definitely be the target. Andre Cisco, another one. I'm going to go Ardarius here uh, just because I think he can play single high pretty well. And Andre Cisco has some um, IQ issues. Apparently he, he apparently just like runs around the field, doesn't know what he's doing and then makes a random play. So Ardarius Washington, definitely a very high ceiling player. Number two in the nation, two years ago behind um, his buddy, Trevon Merrick. So at 81, we got the Dolphins and the Dolphins. This is an interesting one. I think they need a safety and a linebacker. I might be targeting Chaz Surratt here. I think that's, that's honestly a really good target for us. If we don't, yeah, honestly, we're going to pull that trigger. Going Chaz Surratt right here for uh, for the Dolphins. They don't need a guy to really play the run right now. They got Bernard McKinney there, and I honestly think his best role is as a safety. So you can use him both as a pass rusher, a safety, and a linebacker. It's just it's a, it's a Swiss Army knife for, uh, for the Dolphins to use, and I think that Brian Flores is going to love that. At 82, we got the Washington football team again. And this is a good spot for us to potentially take a guard like Ben Cleveland. Cause again, we just traded. I mean, I think that I don't, I don't know why you guys might be losing Scherf. Alex Leatherwood would be a good backup option though. I know that you guys like Sadiq Charles and shit, but it might be a good target. Uh, Nico Collins might be my pick here though. You know, he's big. He's going to be a great boundary guy. Adam always injured Humphreys is not going to be your answer at slot. I think that's going to be Curtis Samuel and you got Adam Humphreys in case you couldn't get a boundary wide receiver to actually be able to play at a high level. Uh, Nico Collins is a pick for me. I, again, it's just it's too much upside. You got Kelvin Harmon there that you took a while ago. He didn't pan out, so get a guy like Nico Collins who definitely could pan out. For ran in the four fours at six foot four. Uh, Eighty three, the Bears. Uh, the Bears. This is a, this is an interesting one because we could definitely be selecting an offensive lineman here. And I think that Jalen Mayfield could definitely be the target because I'm pretty sure that they kept Leno and lost Massey. And he plays right tackle, but they also can kick him to guard. He has stub arms, but the upside is a little bit too good to, I mean, he used to be in my first rounds, man. He's definitely young and talented. So uh, you just take him, take him. He's a redshirt sophomore and there's a lot of upside there. Why not? The Bears desperately need it more than a quarterback. All these guys are going to be sideways moves for the Bears besides Kellen Mond, who could be an, uh, an upwards move. Because again, these guys, uh, I don't think that they're going to be taken. I really don't. I think the teams are going to realize, like, what are we getting here? Like, Kyle Trask has some very big limitations. Kellen Mond is inconsistent. And Davis Mills, we don't even know what the hell he is. So when teams like Pittsburgh, they're trying to win now, they, they can't devote capital to Davis Mills. Uh, teams like the Bears... You know, they're just trying to stay afloat and they don't even have an offensive line. Why the hell are they going to be investing in a quarterback that is pretty much going to be just as good as Andy Dalton? who has, He's been a perennial star in the NFL. Maybe not like a great star, but definitely somebody who's worth being maybe the 33rd quarterback in the league. Uh, I don't know if I see that from these guys. Apparently the Steelers have Kyle Trask higher than like Mac Jones or something. But I mean, I used to be on that boat all day. But still, I mean, these quarterbacks definitely – probably will be gone by this point, but we'll see about that in the predictive mock. At number 84, the Eagles are on the board and um, tight ends pretty much gone. Yeah, you've lost the, uh, the linebackers. This is a good spot to move back, in my opinion. We could take Alex Leatherwood here and have a really, really good option uh, long-term uh, for being able to put him at guard, but I'm not really too comfortable with that, to be honest with you guys. And I just don't see any quarterbacks being a good option for us to bring in extra competition. You know what I mean? So we're going to be trading out here with the team that might be looking for a quarterback. That team could be the Vikings. The Vikings have a lot of issues, but they also now have time to look for a quarterback. If you guys get what I'm saying, um, the Titans are another team who I like. I think they could be a sneaky move up here. They could be a sneaky team to try to move in and be able to select a quarterback. So we're going to be offering, because, I mean, both these teams have are loaded with picks, right? Um, we're going to be offering maybe a next year, fit, or a two years in the future fifth round pick in order to move up six spots, which I think, it, honestly, is pretty fair. Again, it's like uh, the Eagles are now getting future, future value. This is where you take Alex Leatherwood or a quarterback, and apparently they're in the run for a quarterback, and I think Davis Mills has a lot of potential. 
He's probably going to be the sixth quarterback off the board, just given how good he was in high school. So Davis Mills, definitely a good prospect. And at here, ooh, this is uh, – I really want to pull the trigger on a, on a, on a quarterback, but we're going – we're going to go Amari Rodgers. I think the NFL likes Amari Rodgers better than Dwayne Eskridge, but I love Dwayne. I would have taken Dwayne there personally, but Amari Rodgers has a big impact. I can understand. They are very much rack, and both these guys are great. I think Amari might be a little bit more polished overall, but Dwayne Eskridge is too good. Too good to pass up, in my opinion. Speaking of a team that could use a slot-wide receiver, um, the Jets, get Dwayne Eskridge. Why not? Uh, just an excellent weapon there. Uh, the Giants now on the board, you know, they have a lot of routes that they could go, but we already got them um, their guards fix. Why not get Cameron Grown? Why not? I think that's going to be an excellent option for them. You know, definitely more rangy linebacker could play uh, definitely more of those pass sets. I think it's a big, big addition to the squad. At number 88, the Rams. You know, the Rams, this is where a guy like Tommy Tramble would have been pretty good. You get a heavy blocking tight end there. But, you know, I... I don't really see too much upside from Hunter Long. I just never really liked him in the first place. Uh, Tackle-wise, I could look at James Hudson right here as somebody who can play um, a starting left tackle spot, and that's kind of hard to find. Jackson Carmen's a big-ass dude who has a lot of potential. He has stub arms, though, but you can use him inside. But I think this guy's actually going to be um, a sneaky pick for a lot of teams. Uh, it, it is Deontay Smith, but I'm thinking about Robert Hainsey here because they lost Austin Blythe. And they need a center pretty desperately. This could be the right move. Slot corner also is kind of a vacancy for this team. So you could definitely look for one, but again, not really an option here. Keith Taylor would be a pretty good boundary option. But um, offensive tackle-wise, honestly, Leatherwood might be too good to give up right now uh, to pass up on. Definitely you can develop him under Whitworth for a year. I'm going to do it just because, again, the upside, he was like the number one guard in the country when he was playing guard. So he definitely has a lot of potential. But again, I think that's another guy we're going to see fall quite a bit. I don't think that we're going to see him taken very highly just because of the fact that really there's not too much upside to him. Apart from being at guard, there's not really too much there. Uh, For the Browns, I could definitely see them getting a, a pass rusher and a guy who has a lot of upside. So I'm looking at Cam Sample and Ellerson Smith here. I think Cam Samples is a guy that a lot of NFL teams are very high on. Uh, he's shown a lot of great flashes, especially at the Senior Bowl. I think he's worth taking the pick. Why not? You can sit him behind Jadavion Clowney for a year and then see if he can actually pan out. That's definitely worth it for me. Number 90, the Eagles. Uh, y'all back. <laughs> uh, this is this is a target spot. I could see Hunter Long, but again, I don't think that you guys are getting rid of um, – I don't think you guys are getting rid of um, Ertz anytime soon. So I could look at Dylan Moses here as a potential target. That would be somebody who has a lot of upside if he's able to stay healthy, but we already know nobody can stay healthy in the city. <laughs> it's just a, it's a bait. It's a blatant fact. I would honestly be looking at Deontay Smith here, Robert Hainsey, Jackson Carmen as guys who can be that tackle guard center hybrid. Um, Deontay Smith to me would be a pure guard. And you're pretty much going to be saying, uh, Suamalu, you can kiss my ass. And to be honest, he can kiss my ass. I like Deontay Smith. I have him as a third round guard. I, I do like the potential from Deontay Smith at guard. And Isaiah or Isaiah Suamalu, uh, bye bye. No one needs you, buddy. So um, Deontay Smith, definitely worth taking the shot on right there. And he's going to definitely fit in and play a very big role in this roster. For the Browns, there's just not too many needs, dude. To be honest, I think this could be a pick where they just send it off and just kiss it goodbye uh, to some other team and get some extra draft capital. But to be fair, I really like Robert Hainsey on the squad because he can play every single one of the positions as a backup. And if Jedrick Wills goes down, he can fill in. If uh, Ta- uh, or Jack Conklin goes down, can fill in. If one of the guards goes down, he can fill in. I think that's going to be very valued. I think it's a sneaky pick in the third round. I think Robert Hainsey goes. Like, I-, I don't like Brady Christensen at all. I think NFL teams aren't going to either. So that's a big, big plus for me. At number 92, the uh, Packers on the board, that would have been my pick. That's another reason why I wanted to take that for the um, for the Browns. It's just the Packers would have been lurking. But the uh, the Packers could definitely use interior offensive, uh, interior offensive line, interior defensive line here. They definitely could use anything pretty much. Davion Nixon's kind of worth that pick for me, so definitely select it, write it in, and be able to have somebody who has a lot of upside. Uh, Juco player, Big Ten defensive player of the year, definitely worth uh, taking a shot on at 92. 
Number 93, there's still a Lee McNeil on the board too, by the way. So I think that's another option that we might even go here for the Bills. Uh, I, I just don't really see a really power back. This is going to be weird, guys, because I love me some Michael Carter. I see Trey Sermon being on the Bills. Excellent guy who's going to be in the committee. If you're able to use him similar to a Javante Williams role, I think it's worth that late third. I'm a big fan of that pick right there, actually. I think that the NFL is going to be pretty high on him, and I know a lot of you guys are too. Kenny and Wengu ran a 4-3-2, by the way, so just saying. Uh, at number 94, the Ravens are on the board, and um, this is going to be a pick that I think will happen. Seth Williams, big-ass target. If we're missing out on a guy uh, like Terrace Marshall Jr., we're getting Seth Williams, who is pretty much just like a downgraded version of Terrace Marshall with better hands. Not that much better, but better hands, especially better aggressive catch hands. And 95, the Bucks are on the board. And to be honest, they're going to go interior defensive line here. They're going to get Tyler Shelvin, a straight up monster at the nose tackle spot. I think that he could have that um, Snacks Harrison role. You know, he's so big and he has a very big impact on every play. I like it a lot. Number 96, we got the uh, the Patriots on the board and already got quarterback, I believe, Mac Jones. There's not really any position we really need to go. So we're just going to go with a guy with an extremely high ceiling. I think Kenneth Gainwell would work really well in this squad. You guys might not like it at all. Uh, honestly, actually, no, you guys need a corner. You guys need a man corner. Elijah Griffin would be a pretty good one for your squad. I think that would be – that's something that I could see happening because, again, we might be losing one of, if not – two of our starting corners in J.C. Jackson and Stephon Gilmore due to contracts. So uh, Elijah Griffin would be a really good option here to add some extra depth and be able to grow under those two excellent corners. Number 97. Also, there is Keith Taylor there, but Elijah Griffin, to me, young. He's going to fit a little bit better. Um, the Chargers sitting here, we could definitely get another corner. I'm not going to lie because, I mean, do I really need to explain it? No. But um, this could be a good spot for a slot wide receiver if we want one, but there's not really any good ones on the board. Uh, Kate, Daz Newsom just tested terribly, like terribly, terribly in those four sixes. And again, four seven for a tight end, much better than a four, uh, a high four six for a wide receiver. So um, to me, honestly, this is just kind of a luxury pick. I'm going to be going Keith Taylor Jr. here. Just why not? Uh, I, th I have him as a late second. I think he's a really damn good corner. Length, great. Speed, great. Uh, ball skill is terrible. But now you, you have a pretty damn solid secondary right there uh, with some very young players who are ready to play day one. I'm a big fan of it. Number 98, we got the Saints. And Saints, y'all need, need some help. Uh, this is one where I could definitely see a guy like Ellerson Smith being able to be put in here. Very highly developmental player, but you look at his size, 6'7", and he has some flashes where he looks really good. I think he's worth taking a shot on. Ellerson Smith out of Northern Iowa, big fan. Uh, number 99, Dallas. You guys are going to like this pick. Ali McNeil. I'm a big fan of him. Uh, you know, I didn't have him in my top 100, but that's just that's thanks to positional value. But he's definitely a really good player. So if Dallas takes him, that's going to be a, that's gonna be a good fit right there. Ali McNeil to the Cowboys. Number 100, we got the Titans on the board. And I think we could go after a right tackle here, but there's not really any on the board. James Hudson might be worth taking a shot on, though. Safety, you guys are pretty bereft. You know, Divine Diablo could be good. Hamza Nasir Dean would be a nice old linebacker safety hybrid. Um, I think that he could be a good fit for Benny, Kenny Vaccaro's spot. But we're going to go offensive line here. We are going to actually go James Hudson, who has potential to actually start in the NFL at left tackle. But you're going to be moving him to right tackle, which is perfectly fine, given the fact that right tackle ain't too bueno. Number one, 101, we got the Lions. And y'all have four quarterbacks, apparently, on your roster. So we're going to ditch that train, and we're going to go Dylan Moses of Alabama. Again, four quarterbacks isn't, like, going to stop me from taking a quarterback, but it is from taking a guy who probably won't start. So um, Dylan Moses is definitely worth that pick. At 102, we got the Niners. Um, to be honest, I don't really think that we need to take a pick here. There's a team that's trying to clamor to get up into this draft. That's the Bears. The Bears are trying to come back in, and the Niners, they've already fleeced the Bears many times before, so they're going to fleece them again. Uh, you know, we're going to ask for a – well, we're going we're gonna to ask for that next year fought. How about that? We're not going to do – we're not going to do anything too crazy. So we're going to get a fourth-round pick and then get a five. The Bears are moving up, and now they're selecting either Kyle Trask or Kellen Bond. 
Kellen Mond just goes away from what they've been doing the entire time. I think that if they really wanted to go Kellen Mond route, they would have kept Mitchell Trubisky for one more year and then, or else just like went after a guy who's a little bit more mobile, maybe a, um, a Ryan Fitzpatrick. I think they're going after a guy like Cal Trask. I think that's going to be something that they do. And the Bears have now secured a potential franchise guy. 103, the Rams. Um, the Rams could definitely trade out of the spot too because the quarterbacks, they're coming off the board. Um, there's teams that definitely want them. And I'm looking at a team you're looking at right here, um, the Titans. The Titans are definitely a team I could consider taking a quarterback for. And you know what? The Titans are going to be moving up for it because I don't know if the Titans are that confident in the fact that they're actually going to be um, competitive anytime soon. So the Titans are going to be moving up. Uh, the Rams are just going to be asking for maybe a six in return. And that's going to be a pretty good haul for the Rams to be able to get those two picks. And for the Titans, I mean, again, y'all just had Marcus Mariota. Kellen Mond could be Marcus Mariota to you guys. So I think that that is going to be, um, it's going to be a good selection. I think that it's pretty solid overall. And Kellen Mond has a lot of uh, potential there. So we're seeing the quarterbacks start flying off the board, but that's, I mean, that's pretty understandable. Next, we got the uh, the Baltimore Ravens, and this might be one of the last picks because I don't see that the ticker's moving anymore, but this could be a good spot for a guy like Hunter Long to offer another tight end option. Uh, we could also look at a safety route. You look at Divine Diablo. He could be a really good safety over Chuck Clark. Uh, Hamza Nasir dean could be fun. I see Andre Sisko in this roster, though. You know, using him along uh, with Deshaun Elliott and everything, he could be really good, but we do need a center. We do need a center. Um, Trey Hill out of Georgia could be quite fun in this roster, but Kendrick Green, a lot of people like Kendrick Green. So Kendrick Green is the pick. He'll be playing center along with Bozeman, trying to get that starting job. Has guard versatility. I like it. Uh, number 105, we got the Saints. And the Saints possibly ending off the draft, missed out on all the quarterbacks, another reason why people had to move up. Um, I could see them trying to rock a wide receiver here. And that's going to be 2-2 Atwell. It's worth taking a shot on. He is pretty damn electric, but there's just a lot of big negatives on him. So that's the draft, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if I left off anybody who you thought should have been drafted. And let me know why you disagree with all my picks. Because hearing that these picks suck, I mean, yeah, that's great. But what, what picks, why, always good to understand why. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the far side. Peace.